This video is designed to be used with the book Qigong Massage by Dr. Yang Jingming. While this video demonstrates the movements, the book offers a more detailed explanation of the techniques and will discuss the theory behind them. Qigong An Mo, Fu Xiang An Mo. One, relaxation. Relaxation includes both physical and mental relaxation. Even if you aren't involved in strenuous physical activities, worry, stress, and responsibility can cause mental tension. Physical tension can be caused by incorrect posture, worry, or even intense thinking. Tension causes your qi and blood circulation to become stagnant. Relaxation or general massage can calm your agitated mind and relax your physical body. And allow the qi and blood to again circulate smoothly. Two, recovery from fatigue. Recovery from fatigue refers primarily to physical fatigue from hard labor or exercise. Acid accumulates in the muscles and causes aches and muscular soreness. General massage is very effective in improving qi and blood circulation, which helps to remove the accumulated acid. Preventing illness. One of the main purposes of relaxation massage is the prevention of illness by smoothing out the qi and blood circulation before any physical damage can occur. Smooth qi and blood circulation is the main key to maintaining the normal functioning of our thinking and our physical body. Four, slowing down aging. Maintaining smooth qi and blood circulation is the key to slowing down the aging process. As we grow older, our qi and blood circulation slows down and becomes more stagnant. General massage helps to overcome this and may also stimulate hormone production. Five, speeding recovery from sudden environmental qi disturbances. When our surroundings or environment change suddenly, the qi in our bodies will often not be able to change as quickly. When the weather changes suddenly, our bodies cannot always adjust quickly enough, and we may get sick. This problem is especially serious today, when modern transportation can quickly bring you from one part of the world to another. For example, the sudden changes in the time of day, weather, and altitude can cause problems such as jet lag. General massage and relaxation help the body to adjust itself much more easily to these problems. Enjoyment. The last purpose of general massage and relaxation is enjoyment. Many people get massaged even when they do not have any unhealthy symptoms. Their reason is very simple: massage makes you feel good mentally and physically. Two important points in Qigong massage. Whichever type of Qigong massage you are practicing, either for relaxation or for healing, there are a number of important points which you should keep in mind. One, room temperature. The temperature in the room should be warm enough so that the patient is comfortable. During the massage, their body will be wholly or partially exposed to the air. If it's too cold, they may be tense, and they may even catch a cold. Needless to say, this would prevent you from gaining their wholehearted cooperation. Two, massaging table. You should use a massage table which is comfortable for the patient, and of a height which is comfortable for you. If the table is too high or too low, it will feel awkward to you, and your concentration will be disturbed. Three, dress. The patient should dress comfortably with loose clothing. 
Also, whatever they are lying on should be made of natural material. For example, if they are lying on a polyester sheet, a great mass of qi, static charges, can accumulate in the material and affect the treatment. 4. Air. The air should be circulating gently. If the air is stagnant, both you and the patient will feel uncomfortable. Be aware of your air quality. 5. Stomach. Do not massage a person who has just eaten or who is hungry, since the massage might be uncomfortable, especially when you work on their stomach. 6. Light. Don't have a bright light directly over the patient, since this would make them uncomfortable. 7. Quiet. The room should be as quiet as possible. Noise is always disturbing during massage, though sometimes soft music might help them to relax. 8. Clean. The patient's body should be clean, and your hands should also be clean and warm. Many masseurs will place a silk handkerchief on the area they are massaging to avoid directly touching the skin. However, this reduces the sensitivity of their touch and limits the qi communication between them and the patient. 9. Know why. Before starting, always ask yourself the following questions. What is the purpose of the massage? What does the patient expect? Is the massage for relaxation and enjoyment, or is it to treat an illness? Am I confident that I have enough experience to deal with this massage? Remember, understanding yourself and the patient is the key to a successful treatment. 10. Know the patient. Always understand the patient's body. Different levels of power should be used for different patients and for different purposes. You will also vary the techniques you use depending on the patient. The better you understand the patient's body, the more you will know about the battlefield upon which you are fighting sickness. Accurate Diagnosis Always diagnose the case carefully and determine how serious the problem is. For example, if an injury involves a cracked bone, then you should not massage the area with power since that would hinder the healing of the bone. Wrong treatments only make matters worse. 12. Do not cause uncomfortable feelings. When you massage a patient, do not cause pain or tickle them since this will cause them to tense. 13. Apply herbs. If you are treating the patient externally with herbs, do not apply them anywhere where there are cuts or breaks in the skin since this may cause an infection or another problem. 14. Fingernails. Keep your fingernails short. Long nails will limit how you can use your hands, and they may make your patient nervous. 15. Mutual understanding. You must reach an understanding with your patient if you are to massage any area about which they are shy. 16. Massaging oil. Ask the patient for permission before using massage oil. Some people don't like it. 17. Explain to the patient. Always explain to the patient or massage partner what you are going to do. This will allow them to prepare themselves mentally and will increase their confidence in you. 3. Basic Massage Techniques Massage Pathways One of the most important factors in successful Qigong massage is following the correct pathways. Here we will summarize some of the common pathways. Remember that the main purposes of massage introduced in this video are to get rid of excess qi, smooth out the qi circulation, and also relax the mental and physical bodies. These goals provide the rationale for the pathways. 1. Move from top to bottom. The first general rule in massage pathways is to lead the qi downward so as to release the qi accumulated in the head and body. Therefore, when you massage, your hands move from the top to the bottom. If you reverse the direction, you are nourishing the qi and leading it upward. This will prevent the release of qi and result in the body becoming more yang, which in turn will cause more tension in both the mental and physical bodies. 2. Move from the center to the sides. The next general rule in releasing the qi accumulated in the body is to massage from the center of the body to the sides. Therefore, when you massage, your hands move from the center of the torso out to the sides. If you reverse the direction, you are nourishing the body with qi and preventing the release of qi. This will result in the body becoming more yang, 
which will cause more tension in both the mental and physical bodies. Three, move in circles. There are many different rules for massaging in circles and it can become very confusing. In general massage, in order to release excess chi and improve the chi and blood circulation, lead the chi and blood downward to the feet and also sideward to the arms. There are a few simple rules for this. Let us use two examples to explain these rules. First, when massaging the back of the neck, if you circle counterclockwise on the right hand side and clockwise on the left hand side, you are leading the chi and blood downward. However, if you reverse the direction on both sides, then you are leading the chi and blood upward, which may cause the head to become too yang. When massaging the chest, if you move in a clockwise circle while working on the partner's left chest, and in a counterclockwise circle while working on the right chest, then you are leading the chi upward and to the sides. However, if you reverse the direction, then you are leading the chi downward and also to the sides. Massage Techniques In this section, we will introduce only some basic massage techniques which are commonly used in general massage. Once you have studied and experienced these techniques, you may discover others that are useful in some cases. You may also refer to the book Qigong Massage for other techniques. 1. Rubbing Zou. Mo. Rubbing is usually done with a circular motion. You may use the last section of your thumb, the last section of one or more fingers, or the joints of the fingers. You can also use the side of your palm, the base of the palm, or your forearm. When you use rubbing, you do not actually rub the skin. Instead, your hand contacts the skin and moves with it so that you are actually rubbing under the skin. This lets you remove stagnant chi and blood in the fascia between the skin and the muscles. Since your power is going beneath the skin, you can direct it to the muscles, the fascia between the muscles, or even to the fascia between the muscles and the bones. Rubbing is used to first relax the muscles or the injured area, and then to improve the chi and blood circulation. Rubbing helps to remove stagnant chi and blood and bring them to the skin. Finally, rubbing spreads the chi and blood even farther so that the body can remove it. Rubbing is very effective in removing the acid which accumulates in the muscles when you exercise. Two, pressing. Um. Pressing straight inward is called on. Pressing can be applied through the fingertips, the base of the palm, the forearm, or the elbow. Pressing is often used together with other techniques. For example, in the rubbing technique, pressing is required to adjust the depth of the massage. In massage, you use this technique to apply pressure and then release it. Doing this repeatedly stimulates the area or cavity and affects the chi circulation there. Three, pushing. Tui. Pushing combines pressing with straight movements. It is normally used right after circular rubbing. Pushing can be done with the last section of the fingers, especially the thumb, the side of the palm, the base of the palm, or the forearm. 
Pushing can also be combined with other techniques such as rubbing or vibrating. Pushing is commonly used in both general and tui na massage. In general massage, pushing is used to push and spread the acid accumulated in the muscles. In tui na massage, a straight pushing motion is used to spread bruises and chi out of the area of stagnation. The more the bruises and stagnant chi are spread out, the easier it will be for the body's natural blood and chi circulation to assist the healing. In general, you do not want the stagnation to be focused in a tiny area because this is more difficult for the body's healing processes to handle. Four, grabbing. Na. Grabbing uses the fingers to grab a muscle and rub or shake it. You can use grabbing with one or both hands. It is used particularly on the muscles beside the armpit, the arm muscles, the thigh muscles, and the calf muscles. Five, caressing. Mo. Lightly touching the skin can relax you and give you a very pleasant feeling. Simply move your hands lightly along the massage pathways. Follow the simple rules and massage from the top to the bottom and from the center to the sides and limbs. This will help you to lead the chi from the top of your head to the feet and finally to the ground. And it can also help to spread stagnant chi in the body out to the limbs and finally get rid of it. Six, point striking or knocking. Dian da chao. Point striking is tapping or striking specific areas or cavities with the fingertips. This stimulates the skin or cavity and raises stagnant chi or blood to the surface. Seven, vibrating. Zhen zhan. Vibrating is a quick shaking motion. Normally, this shaking motion is done together with another technique. For example, in Dian Shui massage, you will frequently press a cavity with a finger and then shake or vibrate the finger to quickly raise the energy level in the cavity. In general and Tui Na massage, you may grab a muscle or tendon and shake it to stimulate it. You may also press with the base of your palm on big muscles such as the trunk and thigh muscles, and then shake them to loosen them up. Vibrating is also commonly done with an up and down motion to stimulate the skin and muscles in increased qi and blood circulation. Qigong masters will often use this technique to lead the qi into the patient's body for nourishment. Eight, holding. Duan. Holding is generally used to keep part of the body in a certain position because different positions will cause the patient's body to respond in different ways. While holding part of the body, you may move it in certain ways to loosen it up. For example, in general massage, you may lift the shoulder and move it to loosen up the shoulder blade and shoulder. Nine, raising or lifting. Ti. Raising or lifting is moving part of the body upward. For example, when a patient is lying face down, you may lift up and lower their waist area to loosen up the muscles there. You may also lift up a patient's head to loosen up the neck muscles and spine, or raise their arms or legs to loosen up the joints. Ten, pulling. Pulling is generally applied on the limbs. In general massage, the arms and legs are pulled to straighten out the muscles and tendons. In tui na massage. Pulling is generally used to connect broken bones. Eleven, kneading. Nye. 
Kneading is using the thumb and one or more fingers to grab a portion of the patient's body and then either squeeze or rub it. Kneading is different from grabbing, which is used for larger areas. Kneading is commonly used on the muscles in the back of the neck, the muscles between the neck and the shoulders, the muscles beside the armpit, and on the arms and legs. Very often, tendons, such as the ones in the ankles or the back of the knees, are also needed in Tui Na massage. Sometimes the skin, especially on the back, is needed to stimulate the chi there. 12. Supporting. Ding. Ding means to support, and it is different from holding or raising. Supporting is using part of your body to support part of the patient's body so that you can massage it more easily. For example, you may place the patient's arm on your shoulder and massage the upper arm. You may also use your leg to support the patient's leg in order to loosen up the thigh muscles. 13. Shaking Yao. In this technique, you grab a muscle and shake it, such as the muscles between the neck and the shoulder or the muscle on the back of the thigh. You may even simply use the thumb or the base of the hand to press down and then shake a muscle to stimulate it. 14. Slapping Pai. Slapping is done with either the front or the back of the fingers. After slapping to stimulate the chi in the skin, you may use smooth, gentle pushes to push the stagnant chi away. 15. Flicking Tan. In flicking, the thumb holds back the second or the middle finger and then releases it to snap against the skin. This stimulates the skin cells and improves chi circulation in the skin. 16. Swinging Swai. Swinging is generally used for the limbs. For example, you may gently grab the shoulder or the upper arm and then swing the forearm and the wrist. 16. You may also grab the calf and swing the ankle. Swinging loosens up a joint so that you may massage it more easily. 17. Filing Cuo. Filing is rubbing the skin with the palm, the side of the palm, or the forearm. Filing is different from pushing in that you are actually rubbing the skin to stimulate it and generate heat. Filing opens the pores and releases the chi accumulated under the skin. 18. Dividing. Fun. Dividing is using two forces in opposite directions on a part of the body. For example, you may place both palms on the patient's back and push away from the spine and then let up. This stretches the muscles, and when you let up the pressure, the muscles are stimulated. Another example is when you use both thumbs to push the accumulated chi and blood to the sides of the forehead and spread them out. 19. Combining he. Combining is using two forces to squeeze or bring together parts of the body. For example, you may use both hands to push the muscles or the skin on the sides of the back toward the center. 20. Folding Die. Folding is generally used to loosen the joints of the spine or the chest. For example, you may use both hands to fold the entire body and then release it to loosen it up. 
You may also press both shoulders forward to fold in the chest area and then release the pressure. This will loosen up the chest. 21. Rolling. Gun. Rolling is done with the back of the hand near the knuckles. Hold your hand slightly rounded and keep it relaxed as you roll it back and forth on the area you're treating. If you need to apply more power, you may place your other hand on the one you are rolling with and use the power of both arms. For rolling on larger areas, such as the back, you may use a forearm. Rolling massage increases chi and blood circulation, gets rid of the lactic acid which has accumulated in the muscles, and also restores feeling in numb areas. 22. Chopping P. Chopping is a strike with the side of the palm. It is used when you need increased penetrating power to stimulate the deeper muscles. In general massage, chopping is commonly used on the thigh muscles and sometimes the calf muscles. 23. Carrying on the back. Be. Carrying on the back is a technique which is used for treating spine problems. As the name indicates, you carry the patient on your back facing either away from you or toward you and swing or shake them gently. This technique stretches the patient's spine and trunk muscles and releases any tightness in the spine. 24. Piercing. Cha. Piercing uses a fingernail, often the thumbnail, to press cavities and stimulate the chi circulation. Of course, the fingernail should not break the skin. Piercing is sometimes used by physicians who do not have acupuncture needles. Piercing is commonly used in both Tui Na and Dian Shui massage. Pressing in with a fingernail can quickly stimulate a cavity, so piercing is commonly used to revive people who have fainted or to quickly make the body more yang, for example, when a patient has a cold. 25. Pointing. Dian. Pointing uses a finger, usually the thumb or the index or middle finger, or two fingers, usually the index and middle fingers, to press heavily on a cavity. Pointing is different from pressing, which was discussed previously. The area covered with pressing can be large or small. However, pointing covers a much smaller area, and its power is more penetrating. Sometimes the elbow is used when you need more power to penetrate to a cavity which is covered by a thick layer of muscle, such as in the thigh. The pointing technique is sometimes used when acupuncture needles are not available. Pointing is mainly used for Tui Na and Dian Shui massage. 26. Transporting Yun. Transporting uses the fingers to rub repeatedly in a straight line or circle until the skin is warm. This technique is usually applied on small children. However, it's sometimes used for adults in massaging the chest, abdomen, and face. When you are doing the transporting techniques, your fingers should lightly touch the skin as they rub with a fairly fast motion. 27. Quick Pull Ce. The quick pull technique is commonly used to loosen up joints in the arms and legs. To do this technique, hold a finger, a wrist, or ankle and move it around to loosen it up and then give it a quick pull. 28. Striking Da. Striking uses the fists to strike an area. You need to carefully gauge the power, since too much force will cause bruises or other injuries, while too little force will not be effective. You want to stimulate the nervous system and chi without causing any damage. 
Striking is used to quickly stimulate an area in the same way that, when your leg has fallen asleep, you punch it to restore feeling. Twenty-nine, shifting, slipping. No. To do shifting, grab a piece of skin with one or both hands, and either shake it or let it slip out of your hand. Shifting is used to stimulate the skin, but be careful when you grab not to damage the skin. Shifting is commonly used on the back. Thirty, raining. Le. Raining is commonly used to stretch the muscles or tendons on the joints of the fingers or toes. Pull the finger, then let it quickly slip out of your grip. Thirty-one, squeezing. Ji. Squeezing is commonly done with the fingers or palms. The fingers are used on smaller areas of skin, such as the forehead or the smaller joints, such as the spinal joints in the neck. The palms are used to squeeze the big muscles in the arms and legs. Thirty-two, pecking. Zo. Pecking uses the fingertips formed into a beak to stimulate the skin. Thirty-three, swaying. Huang. With the swaying technique, you place both hands on the patient's body and move the skin to and fro with a very slow motion. Swaying is used to relax the patient physically and mentally. Be sure not to rub the skin; just move it back and forth. Thirty-four, rotating. Xuan. Hold the limb on both sides of the joint and twist or rotate the joint. Twisting the limb will stretch the muscles, while rotating the joint will loosen the joint. Thirty-five, combing. A su. This technique uses the fingers or fingertips to comb along the ribs from the center of the body to the sides. Combing is one of the main techniques for leading qi from the center of the body to the sides. Thirty-six, reeling. Tan. Reeling uses the middle section of the fingers and palms to rub in a circular motion along a straight line. Reeling can be used on most of the body, such as the back, the chest, or the limbs. Thirty-seven, wiping. Ta. Wiping uses the fingers or palm to gently wipe or brush to and fro on the area being massaged. Wiping is an easy way to stimulate the skin cells. It is commonly used to strengthen deficient guardian qi. Thirty-eight, cupping. Ko. To use cupping, cup your hand with all the fingers touching and hit the area you are treating. Cupping can stimulate the skin efficiently without injuring it. Four, massage with a partner. When you massage your partner, you should follow the correct massage procedures. First, you massage the head and the neck to loosen them up, so that the qi channels and blood vessels can be circulating smoothly between the head and the body. Next, you massage the back, especially the spine and the trunk muscles. When the spine and the trunk muscles are loose, the brain will be able to govern the entire body's nerve system efficiently. After massaging the back, you should lead the qi downward. Therefore, you continue to massage the lower limbs, leading the qi to the bottom of the feet. In addition, in order to improve the qi circulation and remove any accumulated qi in the body, 
you should also massage the upper limbs and lead the chi to the hands. Next, you massage the front of the body to loosen up the chest and the abdominal area. In addition, you may use the massage to make the internal organs relaxed and improve their chi circulation. Naturally, you should again lead the chi downward to the feet and also lead the chi to the hands to dissipate the accumulated chi in the body. Understanding Important Zones or Gates In Chinese general massage, there are many important zones or gates which should be paid attention to in massage. Most of these zones are also acupuncture cavities. Normally, through massage stimulation of these zones, the qi state in the body can be agitated or adjusted to a new balanced state efficiently. Consequently, if you know how to massage these zones correctly, you will be able to obtain the maximum result of the massage. In this video, we will show the methods of massaging these zones. For more detailed theory and locations, you should refer to the textbook. Massaging the head and neck. The head is the center of your entire being, and it governs and influences your mental body, chi body, and physical body. When you massage the head first and relax it, your partner's mind will become calm and their entire body will stay relaxed. In addition, when the muscles and the nerve network in the head are relaxed, the chi channels will be wide open and the chi will be able to circulate smoothly in the brain. Smooth chi and blood circulation can prevent or even cure headaches. In addition, giving the brain cells enough chi will slow down the natural process of degeneration. Qigong practitioners believe that the first requirement for a healthy body is to keep the brain cells healthy. A. Gates 1. Biliang The Biliang, or the bridge of the nose, is right over the nasal cavity, through which air enters and leaves your body. When this area is tense, the membrane inside the nose will swell and interfere with the free flow of air. This is usually what happens when you have a cold. The most common way to massage the bridge of the nose is to use both index fingers or middle fingers to lightly press the sides of the bridge of the nose and circle around. This leads the chi upward to the forehead and then allows it to be spread upward or to the sides. Usually, you circle a few times on the bridge of the nose and then lead the chi up to the upper dantian. Next, again use the middle finger to circle the bridge of the nose several times in the same direction mentioned, then lead the hands downward along the sides of the nose. Finally, spread the chi to the sides of the face. When you do this massage, your touch must be soft. Remember, a soft touch helps relaxation, a harder press will tense up the muscles. The motion should be smooth and continuous. This enables you to lead your partner's mind to follow your massage and helps them to use their own mind, or E, to lead their chi. 2. Renzong The Renzong, philtrum cavity under the nose, is well known to Chinese physicians and Qigong practitioners for its ability to stimulate awareness and wake people up. Stimulating this cavity will raise the chi of the head and stop a sneeze, and it can raise the spirit and immediately revive a person out of a fainting spell. Massaging the Renzhong cavity will open blockages of the chi channels in the head. To massage the Renzhong, Simply use the thumb or the tip of the middle finger to deeply press inward firmly and vibrate. Bai Hui Hundred Meetings is the cavity or qi gate on the top of the head, which allows the brain to communicate with the qi of nature. Qi can reach the brain easily through this gate to nourish the brain. To massage this gate, Simply place the center of your right palm on the crown of the head and gently circle your hand clockwise to nourish the brain. Reversing the direction and circling counterclockwise will release qi from the brain and relieve a headache. Taiyang Sun cavities are also known as the temples. 
Whenever your brain gets overused from too much worry or thinking, the muscles in the temple area will tense up. This can disturb the supply of chi and blood and cause a headache. It is therefore important to open this gate by lightly massaging the temple areas to loosen up the muscles and let the blood circulate. The index and middle fingers are usually used to massage the temples with a circular motion. After you have circled a few times, move the massage downward to the chin to dissipate the chi and blood from the temples. You may repeat the process several times to release the pressure in the temple areas. Yifeng. The two Yifeng, shielding wind, cavities are very important gates which are located under the ears. A major artery runs below each ear on its way to the brain. Whenever the muscles on the sides of the neck are tight, the arteries will be constricted and the brain will not receive enough oxygen. This will cause dizziness. Constriction here may also hinder the blood returning from the head to the heart and cause headaches. Massage with your thumbs or middle finger in a circular motion up the front and down the back. This will spread the stagnant chi backward to the neck muscles. After circling a few times, push downward to the bottom of the neck. Repeat the process several times until you feel the areas under the ears relax. Erman, ears door, and chipping, crook of the temple, which are located in front of the ear, are on the artery coming from the yifeng cavity. In massage, the yifeng, ermen, and chubin cavities are frequently treated as one, since they are all in a line on the main artery. While the yifeng cavity is massaged downward, ermen and chubin are massaged upward to the top of the head. This helps in the blood distribution from the ears to the top of the head. To massage ermen, simply use the middle finger or the second and middle fingers to gently rub the cavity with a circular motion a few times and then gently push upward. Pass through chubin and rub it a few times and finish by pushing upward to lead the chi and blood to the top of the head. When you circle, the direction should be downward to the neck, toward the back of the neck, upward, and finally forward. This will easily lead the accumulated chi and blood upward to the top of the head. Xia Guan Lower Hinge is located on the joint of the jaw. Massaging Xia Guan can remove any qi and blood stagnation in the jaw joint and also maintain the normal functioning of the parotid gland. To massage Xia Guan, use the index and middle fingers to rub the cavity with a circular motion. Rub up into the rear of the head and down and forward. Circle a few times and then gently push downward to the chin. Tianzhu means heaven's pillar, with heaven referring to the head. Tianzhu is located on the back of the neck. The neck is the gate through which qi and blood move from the body to the head, and any tension there will interfere with this circulation. You have to massage the neck and loosen up the muscles before the head can be really relaxed. When you massage the Tianzhu cavities, you will be able to loosen the muscles on the neck easily. Tianzhu is always massaged together with the cavity Naohu, which will be discussed next. When you massage the Tianzhu cavity, if your partner is sitting, you may use your thumbs to gently press the cavities and then circle a few times, and finally push gently downward to the back of the body. You may use one of your hands to stabilize your partner's head while using the edge of the other hand to massage Tianzhu in the same direction. Nao Fu means brain's household. This cavity is located in the middle of the back of the neck, between the two main muscles and just under the skeleton. It is called brain's household because it's the entrance through which qi enters the brain. 
massaging this door and relaxing the muscles there is believed to improve qi communication between the brain and the body. To massage this cavity, simply use your right thumb to gently press the cavity with a circular rubbing motion. The clockwise direction is for nourishment, while counterclockwise is for releasing. B. Techniques. Partner Sitting. Your partner can sit cross-legged on the floor with you kneeling behind or in a chair with you standing behind them. Your partner should be as comfortable as possible. If you let your partner lean their head against you, they will be able to relax the head and spine even more. Step number one. Gently massage the bridge of the nose with your middle fingers in a circular motion about five times. Circle according to the rules mentioned earlier. Then stroke the fingers upward to the center of the forehead. Finally, gently stroke your hands to the top of your partner's head, down the back of the neck, and out to the sides. Do this five to ten times. This path smooths out the superficial circulation of the chi and blood in the head. In order to lead the chi out of the neck and head, after you complete each movement, grab the Jian Jing cavity, or the shoulder well, with the thumb and all of the fingers and massage the muscles there. This will lead the chi further out of the shoulders from the neck area. You may also massage the Gaohuang cavity on the back and lead the qi from the neck to the back. The Jianjing and Gaohuang cavities are important gates in back massage. After you have completed this massage pathway, again circle the bridge of the nose with your middle fingers in the same direction and then gently press and brush downward along the sides of the nose. Repeat several times. Finally, use your fingers to spread from the nose area to the cheeks. This massage will release tension in the sinus area, improve the qi and blood circulation there, and spread the accumulated qi and blood both upward and downward. Step 2. Again, circle your middle fingers on the bridge of your partner's nose about five times, and then move them up to the forehead. Brush with your middle and index fingers to the sides of the forehead, circle a few times on the temples, tai yang, brush down to the jaws and circle a few times, and finally, brush down the front of the neck to the chest. Repeat the procedure five to ten times. This procedure can relax the temple and jaw areas and improve qi and blood circulation in the face. Step 3. Again, start at the bridge of the nose. Circle your middle fingers five times, and then use your index and middle fingers to gently circle the eyes about five times. Finally, rub to the sides of the eyes and downward to the jaw. Repeat the procedure about five to ten times. Then rub your hands together until they are warm, and gently place the base of your palms on your partner's eyes to nourish them with the chi from your palms. Stroke sideward with the base of the palms to the temples and downward to the cheeks. This is called ironing the eyes. This path improves the chi and blood circulation around the eyes and slows the deterioration of the eyes. Step 4. Gently press your index fingers in front of your partner's ears on the ermen cavity and rub lightly up and around the ears until your fingers reach the bottom of the ears. Then stroke downward to the sides of the neck. Do this about five times. Next, press your hands on their ears, then circle the ears five times in one direction and then five times in the other direction. 
Next, press the ears and immediately release several times to pop the ears. Finally, massage the entire ear with your fingers. According to Chinese medicine, different portions of the ears correspond to different internal organs. Massaging the ears can stimulate and improve the functioning of the internal organs. This massaging path can also keep the ears functioning properly. Step 5. Next, massage the muscles on the back of the neck. When you massage the back of the neck, let your partner's head lean slightly backward to relax the muscles. Starting at the base of the skull, press and push with your thumbs down along the neck muscles on both sides of the spine. Alternatively, you may change your massage position and use one of your hands to support your partner's head by pressing gently forward on their forehead and using the edge of the other hand to gently rub downward on the back of the neck. Then use the thumb and fingers of one hand to grab and rub the back of the neck ten times, paying particular attention to the Tianzhu and Nauhu cavities. This loosens up the neck and allows the qi and blood to pass through the neck more smoothly. You should again grab and massage the shoulder muscles, Tianjin cavity on both sides with your fingers. Naturally, you may again lead the qi to the back by massaging the Gaohuan cavity on the back. Step 6. This is the final pathway for massaging the head. After you have loosened up all of the gates and muscles on the head and neck, you now want to lead the qi accumulated under the skin and in the muscles to the surface of the skin so that you can lead it downward to the neck and spread it out to the back of the body. The first way to do this is to loosen up the fascia between the skin and the skeleton. Simply place one or both palms on your partner's head. Gently press downward and move the skin in a circular motion. After circling a few times, stroke downward. Circle toward the center and downward to the back of the neck. You may also circle in the other direction to lead the chi downward from the forehead to the face. However, experience shows that it's better to lead the chi backward instead of forward. Next, gently tap your fingertips over the entire head. This will lead the chi to the surface of the skin. When you tap, you should always start at the center and move to the sides and back. After you finish tapping, again use your palms to brush the head from the top to the back of the neck and finally down to the shoulder and the back of the body. B. Techniques. Partner lying down. When you massage the head and the neck, you may also have your partner lie on their back. This position has several advantages compared to the sitting position. First, the neck muscles can be very relaxed simply because they don't have to support the head. This allows you to penetrate more deeply into the neck. Second, lying down is more relaxed and more comfortable for the person being massaged, and therefore the massage can be more enjoyable. Use your thumbs to gently massage the bridge of your partner's nose about five times with a circular motion. The direction of the circle should follow the rules discussed earlier. Then, stroke the thumbs upward to the center of the forehead. Finally, stroke your hands to the sides of your partner's head, circle a few times on the temples and down the sides of their neck, and then out to the chest. Do this five to ten times. After you have completed this pathway, again use your thumbs or middle finger to circle the bridge of the nose in the same direction, and then gently press and brush downward along the sides of the nose. Use your hands to spread from the nose area to the cheeks. Repeat this several times. This massage will release tension in the sinus area, improve qi and blood circulation there, and disperse the accumulated chi and blood both upward and downward. 
Step 2. Again, start at the bridge of the nose. Circle your thumbs five times, and then use your thumbs to gently circle the eyes about five times. Finally, rub to the sides of the eyes and downward to the jaw. Repeat the procedure five to ten times. Then rub your hands together until they are warm, and gently place the base of your thumbs on their eyes to nourish them with the chi from your palms. Then stroke sideward with the base of the thumbs to the temples and downward to the cheeks. Step 3. Gently press your index fingers in front of your partner's ears on the ermen cavity and rub lightly up and around the ears until your fingers reach the bottoms of the ears. Then stroke downward to the sides of the neck. Do this about five times. Next, press your hands on their ears, then circle the ears five times in one direction, and then five times in the other direction. Then press on the ears and immediately release the pressure to pop the ears a few times. Finally, massage the entire ear with your fingertips. Step 4. Use your fingers to lift and rub the muscles on the back of the neck, especially on the gates. After you have loosened up the neck muscles, you also need to lead any excess chi down out of the head so that it doesn't stagnate there. Grab and massage the shoulder muscles again, Jian Jing cavity, on both sides. Then use your hands to stroke and brush from the neck to the shoulders. Step 5. After you have loosened up all of the gates and muscles on the head and neck, you then want to loosen up the fascia between the skin and the skeleton. Place one or both palms on your partner's head, press downward gently, and move the skin in a circular motion. After circling a few times, stroke to the sides and then downward. Finally, Brush with your hands from the back of the neck to the shoulders and the chest. Massaging the back. The back runs from the base of the neck down to the coccyx and to the sides of the body from the armpit to the waist. Below the sides of the waist and the sacrum is considered to be part of the legs and will be discussed in the next section. The spine is the center of the nervous system, with nerves extending out to the brain, the limbs, and the internal organs. It is through this network that the brain controls the body. The spine is also the center of our chi distribution system, and also of our ability to sense our surroundings. If the muscles around the spine remain tense, the chi circulation and the functioning of the nerves can be affected in the whole body. Right after massaging the head, you should massage the spine and loosen up the muscles around it. Gates Jianjing Jianjing means shoulder well and is the passageway between the neck and the arms. Stimulating the Jianjing cavity correctly will not only open up the qi channels from the head to the arms, but also stimulate the skin and open all the pores. To massage this gait, simply grasp the shoulder muscles with your thumb and fingers and rub the muscles forward and backward, vibrating them gently. Do not use too much power when you do this, as it will be painful and cause the muscles to tense. This will seal the gates rather than open them. After rubbing a few times, the shoulder muscles should be loose and more relaxed. Then press the cavity with your index and middle fingers and make a circular motion to stimulate the cavity more deeply. Finally, slide your hands or the edge of your hands along the shoulder muscles and down to the shoulder joints. Tianzong Heaven's Ancestor cavity 
is located in the center of the shoulder blade and belongs to the small intestine channel. Tianzong is the qi passageway between the arm and the back. Massaging this cavity can open this passage and allow smooth qi communication between the arm and the back. To massage this cavity, use your index and middle fingers to press gently with a circular motion. If you use your right hand on the cavity located on the right, circling clockwise will lead qi to the arms, while circling counterclockwise will lead qi downward. You may also use the base of the palm to massage this gate. Gao Huang. Vital's hollow cavity is located right beside the shoulder blade near the spine. In the martial arts, this cavity is struck to contract the lungs and seal the breath. To massage the Gaohan cavity, push the shoulder back slightly with one hand to loosen up the area, and then use the edge of the other hand to circle the cavity and push downward. Ling tai. The Ling Tai cavity, or the spirit's platform, is so called because it is opposite the heart. Stimulating this cavity correctly will relax the heart. However, very strong stimulation may cause a heart attack. Massaging this cavity can balance the qi in the front and the back of the body. When you massage Ling Tai, you should not put pressure on the bones directly and cause pain. The best way to massage this cavity is to press gently with the base of the palm or side of your fist and circle. When you circle clockwise, you are nourishing the heart. However, there is usually too much qi in the heart, so you would normally circle in a counterclockwise direction and then lead the qi downward to the lower back. Mingmen. Mingmen means life's door. It is called this because it's the gate through which you can reach the residence of the qi, the lower dantian. According to Chinese medicine, qi is the origin of life. The mingmen is the door to reach this qi storage place. When you massage mingmen to open it, you may use the base of the palm or the side of the fist to circle them. Theoretically, you would like to nourish and increase the qi in the qi residence, and also nourish the qi in your kidneys, since it's usually deficient there. Therefore, when you massage these gates, your right hand should circle clockwise, while the left hand should circle counterclockwise. In Chinese Qigong, the sacrum is the junction where the qi enters the spinal cord and reaches up to the brain. Massaging the sacrum, in addition to sending a pleasant sensation to the brain, also sends qi from the back to the bottom of the feet. This is because the sacrum connects the qi from the legs with the qi which goes all the way to the brain. To massage the sacrum, Use the base of your palm or the side of the fist to rub the area with a circular motion. Since this is the junction of the upward chi and downward chi, you should circle in both directions the same number of times. Long strength is also called wei lu, which means tailbone. When you massage the Qiang Qiang cavity, first use the base of your palm to push inward and upward a few times. Next, use the base of the palm or the second and middle fingers to rub the cavity gently. If you use your right hand, massage clockwise and then push upward. This will follow the natural qi circulation, which is upward to the back from the Qiang Qiang cavity. This can also lead the qi to the sacrum and enter the spinal cord and bone marrow in the spine. B. Techniques After you have completed the head and neck massage, 
you should let your partner lie face down. The first step is to grab and gently squeeze the Jianjing cavities on the muscles between the neck and the shoulders to lead the qi from the head to the shoulders. While you are grabbing, use your thumb to press the Jianjing cavity and rub around. Next, use your second or middle finger to press the Jianliao cavity located on the top of the shoulder joint. This will lead the qi to the top of the arms and spread it out there. Next, lift your partner's shoulder up with one hand and rub and massage the Tianzong with the second and middle fingers. Continue to rub the Gaohang cavities with the edge of the other hand. This will lead qi from the neck downward to the back. Finally, use the base of your palms to press the two back trunk muscles, moving down from the head to the lower back with a circular massaging motion. Massage both sides and repeat the same process about five times. This will loosen up the trunk muscles and release tension in the spine. Do not massage upward because it would lead qi back to the neck and cause problems. Step 2. Once you have finished the circular pressing massage on the back trunk muscles, place one hand on top of the other and press down on each joint in the spine. Do not press on the neck. Be sure that you press on the joints and not on the vertebrae. The purpose is to bend and loosen the joints a little. Press in coordination with your partner's breathing. Place your hands in position and ask your partner to inhale deeply and then exhale. When your partner is exhaling, Press down. Next, starting from the neck and moving down the length of the spine, press your thumbs into the gaps between the joints to stimulate the miscellaneous cavities just beside the center of the spine. When you reach the sacrum, massage it with the base of your palm. After you have finished pressing on the sides of the spine, repeat the procedure, only now press about two inches away from the spine on the cavities on the inner branch of urine bladder channel. Afterward, repeat the procedure from the neck. After pressing, again use the forearm, the palm, or the edge of the palm to rub the trunk muscles in small circles, pushing to the sides and also downward. This procedure leads stagnant qi sideways and downward away from the spine. Repeat the process several times. Step 3. Once you have loosened up the spine and the trunk muscles, you should now lead the qi to the arms, the sides of the body, and downward to the legs. To lead the qi to the arms, first loosen up the area of the shoulder blades. To do this, place your partner's arm behind them, then lift up the shoulder with both hands and gently move it in a circle. Move the right shoulder clockwise and the left shoulder counterclockwise to loosen the entire shoulder area. Next, press with your second and middle fingers on the Tianzong cavity in the center of the shoulder blade and gently rub around. To lead qi to the arms, circle clockwise with your right hand on the right shoulder blade and counterclockwise with your left hand on the left shoulder blade. After you have massaged the Tianzong cavity, use your hand to brush the skin from the spine over the Tianzong cavity and out to the arms. This will lead stagnant qi from the back to the arms.
Step 4. You now want to spread the accumulated chi to the sides of the back. To do this, first you may want to use the sides of your palms to hit the entire back gently from the top to the bottom and from the center to the sides. Alternatively, you may want to grab the skin on the back and shake it a little. This will bring up any chi still hidden under the skin. Next, brush with your hands from the top to the bottom and from the center to the sides. After brushing several times, grab the muscles under the armpits with both hands and rub and shake them. Use your hands to brush from the armpit areas downward to the sides of the waist. Finally, follow the gaps in the ribs with your fingers, pushing from the center of the back to the sides. Repeat several times. Step 5. Finally, you want to spread the chi downward to the legs. To do this, you must first loosen the waist area. Start with the kidneys. Good chi circulation in the kidneys is very important. When it's abnormal, the surrounding area will also be affected. To massage the kidneys, use a circular motion. The right hand should move clockwise on the right kidney, while the left hand should move counterclockwise on the left kidney. These circular motions will nourish the kidneys, and they can also spread the accumulated chi to the sides of the body. When you massage the kidneys, you may also press gently down on them with your palms and then release the pressure. Do this about 10 times and you will feel the tension in the kidneys release and the chi circulation improve. Finally, use both palms to push from the kidneys to the sides of the body and also downward to the hips. In order to loosen the waist area more, you may simply hold the sides of the waist with both hands and gently raise and lower it a few times. Next, press and release with your palms on the joint between the sacrum and the first vertebra about 10 times, and then push to the sides and to the hips to lead the chi there. <laughs> 